So what would be examples of patterns of criminality that would fit under an evolutionary framework? Okay, so let's do, I'll give you two examples. <coughs> and I'll not, not put you on the spot, but I wonder what you're going to say. So what do you think is the number one predictor of there being child abuse in a home? If the, if the father, if the parent was a victim. Right, okay. So then when I lecture about this in class, I will go to the board and I will list all of the explanations. So one yep. would be father was a victim, two might be alcoholic in the home, three might be okay. wrong side of the track. And all of these might have some predictive value in, in predicting the likelihood of there being child abuse. What if I told you that the actual reason is a hundredfold more predictive than any reason that you'll come up with. Now, just to contextualize what a hundredfold means, usually in, usually in science, let's say, let's say you're checking the efficacy of a drug. If the efficacy of the drug versus a placebo effect is 1.2, it means that it's 20% higher efficacy. So one to 1 to 1.2. This effect that I'm about to talk about is one to a hundred. So it's orders of magnitude greater than anything you typically see when you're doing science. Okay. Having said that, can you, you want to revise what you think that one factor is? And, and by the way, if you don't get it, don't feel bad. Almost nobody gets it. Once I will tell you it, you'll, you'll go, oh my God. God. <coughs> The one thing that makes it a hundred times more likely that they're going to be abusive towards a child. Yeah. If they follow Islam. <laughs> Good. Good. Sorry. No. Tommy said it. Tommy yeah. said it. Tommy. Target your hate to him. If their name's Mohammed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no. Okay, so you ready? Yeah, go on. If there is a step parent in the home. Because it's not his kid. There you go. So that increase so of course because their own father's not going to abuse their own child it's very unlikely even if they're an abuser that's less likely so there's going to be if there's a stepdad yeah. now <coughs> step that has become known in the literature in the scientific literature as the cinderella effect because the sin this the, the story of cinderella which is a universal fable the uh, the, the grand uh, the step the stepmother is not dispositionally evil across all her children. Just the stepchild. Just the stepchild. <coughs> she loves her biological children, can't stand her stepdaughter. Now, you can show that in many animal species, other than humans, you have the exact same phenomenon. So for example, if you take a lion's pride, well, what? here's the dynamic that happens. Usually the lion pride is, is held together by one or two dominant males. They kick out all the other males that, who were fathered, who were sired by them once they become sexually mature. So then there are all these young, frustrated ma young males floating around in nature are going to identify a pride, go and test the resolve of the dominant males. Usually they're too young to put up a fight against the big males. Yep. But eventually, father time catches up to the males. Those dominant males are then given one of two choices, either leave peacefully, not unlike Islam, leave peacefully or suffer the consequences. It ends up finishing very badly for those males, whether they are killed by the young bucks or whether they go out into the wild. And they're all alone. They're all alone and they die emaciated and so on. Mm -hmm. What do you think when the new incoming males come into the pride is the first act that they do. What do I think the first act when the new incoming come into the pride? Linking it back to the father, to the stepfather thing. Exactly. Is to abuse them. Is that they systematically kill all the cubs. So why? Because in the, in the lion pride, males do invest in their cubs. Uh, unlike other feline species, where the males only do a copulation. They just have sex and then they disappear, never to be heard. In the male pride, it's a social species where the males do invest in their pride and in their kids. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it doesn't make evolutionary sense for a male to evolve 
the ability to just invest in kids that are not his. So therefore, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill off all the cubs. No, the, mine. The, they're not mine. The females, by the way, are not very happy about that. So they put up, I mean, female lionesses are, are no slouches. They, they actually, they do a lot more work than the males. They will put up a fight. Eventually they lose that fight. The first thing that they do after those new males have killed all of their children, you know what it is? Oh. They suddenly go into estrus, meaning they become sexually receptive. To the, to the one who's killed all day. To the one who's killed. So I always joke with my students when I'm teaching them about all of these dynamics. I say, you know, in the human context, we bring flowers and chocolates and we play very white music. In the lion context, I get you in the mood by killing your children. Okay. Now, why am I telling this whole story? Because there are many, many examples, including in the human case, where if you have heavy investment by both parents, they're not very keen on investing in children who are not theirs. Okay. Yep. So that was the first aha moment. Wow, this is so powerful as an explanation. The second one, this one might be a bit easier to, for you to predict. Who do you think across the world, you could go to an Amazonian tribe in the Amazonian jungle, who do you think is the singular most dangerous person in a woman's life? Is it? Who do I think is the most, sing is the most dangerous person in a woman's life? Yeah, so it could be in a tribe in Africa, yeah. it could be in the Amazon, it could be- Who's the biggest Africa. danger to her? Yeah, do you, can you guess? Is, is it a serial killer hiding in the bushes trying to rape you? Is it who? Once I say it, you're gonna get it. Go on. It's her long-term partner. It's her husband. And that's the same for everyone. So, 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 so the biggest threat to any woman is her husband. Yeah, okay. and now, okay, so that, once we've established that, yep. what is the main reason that men will typically go into a homicidal rage to the horse the woman? Jealousy. Jealousy. So either because of realized infidelity or suspected infidelity, that will drive men to insane, attack. right? Yep. Now, why would you have evolved that trait? Because in the human context, we are a biparental species, meaning both men and women do invest heavily in their children. Therefore, men are not going to be, your ancestors and mine are not those who said, oh yes, sweetie, go ahead and have sex with 10, 20 guys, and I'll be happy to raise those children on behalf of Tony, the sexy gardener. Therefore, we've evolved the emotional, the cognitive, and the behavioral system to not react well to philandering. To betrayal. Women. Now, by the way, People mistakenly think that when you offer a scientific explanation for domestic violence, you're justifying, justifying it. it, you're condoning it. But only imbeciles think like that because <clears throat> I usually retort when somebody says that, all oh, right, so when an oncologist who studies cancer gives you the explanation for cancer, he's for cancer, he's pro-cancer, he's justifying. And this is all factual and backed up anyway, because if you're looking at the most, it's, those are, it's the most attacks come from the through husband. It's backed up through culture, through time period, that's yeah. the beauty of revolutionary thing. So when I saw the, the explanatory power of evolutionary psychology, I said, that's what I'm going to do with my career. And so much of my academic career has been spent applying those evolutionary principles to study human behavior in general. It could be made choice, it could be gift giving, it could be whatever. And so my, my scientific research is all over the place, but what unites it is always a commitment to applying evolutionary theory to understand why you do the things that you do. Why people make their decisions. Yeah.